In this video, I'm going to show you a way to supercharge your covered call returns. This is a little known strategy that professional traders use to minimize risk while producing returns up to four times what you can receive with a covered call strategy. I'm going to show you how to do this by using a real life position that I was in for about a year and a half in Realty Income, ticker symbol O. So if you'd like to increase returns while minimizing risk, get a pen and paper ready because you're going to love this video. Now the technique I'm going to share with you in this video is one that every trader should be using in my opinion if you're trading in non-dividend or low dividend paying stocks. However, as you're going to see, it even works on dividend paying stocks. Now before we get going, for those of you who are new, I want to real briefly tell you what a covered call position is. A covered call position is simply a stock and option position where you own 100 shares of a stock and you sell a call option against those 100 shares. So for example, in this scenario, we owned 100 shares of Realty Income, ticker symbol O, and we sold a call option, which means we sold someone the right to call that stock away from us or to buy the stock from us at a predetermined price known as the strike price. At expiration, if the stock is above that strike price, then the person who bought that call option from you will want to call the stock away from you since they could profit from the difference between what they're buying the stock from you at and what they could sell it for in the open market. However, if at expiration the stock price is below the strike price that you sold the call option at, then the call will just expire worthless and you can do it all over again. So now let's look at a real life example of a covered call position I was in. Here you see that on November 19th of 2020, I bought 300 shares of Realty Income at $65 per share. So that cost me $19,500 out of pocket. Now to turn this into a covered call, you see that on that same day, November 19th, I sold the January of 2021 $65 call option and was paid 95 cents per share for that call option. That meant that at this point, my total out-of-pocket cost for these 300 shares of this covered call position was $19,214.81. Now I've populated all of our trades in this realty income position. Notice that we started this position on November 19th of 2020 and we closed it out on April 18th of 2022. So we're in this position about a year and a half, or as you see here on the bottom, we're in it for 515 days. Notice that the entire time we're in this position, we're selling these covered call options against the 300 shares of realty income that we owned. Notice that this started out on November 19th of 2020 when we sold those January $65 call options and we let them expire worthless on January 15th so they cost us nothing to buy back. Then again on that same day, January 15th, we sold the March $65 covered call option or paid 35 cents per share and bought it back on March 18th, so about two months later for three cents per share. We did this the entire time. We'd buy to close the option that was expiring within a few days, or we'd let it expire worthless, and we'd sell another option a month or two out. And since we own this stock, we're also collecting dividends as you see here. Since Realty Income is a monthly paying dividend stock, we'd receive around 23 to 24 cents per share for that monthly dividend. And at the end of this whole process, on April 18th of 2022, we ended up letting the stock be called away from us at $67.50 per share. Because of that April, that third Friday of April, $67.50 covered call option that we had sold. Notice that we had sold it for $1.33 per share and it was called away from us. So at that point, we're out of this position. Now let's review this overall return for this position. Notice that overall, as a result of selling covered call options, collecting dividends, and then also selling the stock at $2.50 per share higher than we bought it at, we walked away with this position with a net profit of $3,905. Remember that this position initially cost us out of pocket just over $19,000. So our annualized return was 14%. Not how much we'd like to make, but a pretty decent return. So how can we more than double our return all while decreasing our risk using a similar type of trade to a covered call? Now let's talk through the same scenario using a poor man's covered call. Instead of put a poor man's covered call is the exact same thing as a covered call, except that you don't own 100 shares of the underlying stock. You buy a long-term call option in the stock. So in this example, we're saying that we bought the Realty Income, ticker symbol O, $40 strike price call option. We're saying that call option would have cost us $25 per share. Now, since we're out of pocket a lot less money than that $65 per share that the stock cost us when we did the covered call position, then we're going to trade more contracts. Notice that with our covered call position, we traded three contracts the whole time because we own 300 shares of realty income. But in this scenario, we're going to buy six of the long-term call options and therefore we'll be able to sell six of the near-term short call options against it. Notice that our out-of-pocket cost in this position is $15,000 minus the initial 95 cents that we collected by selling those options. 
So our initial out-of-pocket cost in this position is $14,429. Now compare that against where our initial out-of-pocket cost was on the covered call position. You see that we're risking about $5,000 less by doing a poor man's covered call, and we're actually trading twice the number of contracts. So to recap, instead of buying the stock like we did with our initial covered call position, we bought a long-term or what's called a leaps call option in realty income. That gives us the right to buy that stock at $40 per share anytime before that option expires, which in this case was about a year out. And notice that since we only have $25 at risk, we're risking a lot less per share than we do with our covered call. Now something very important you want to understand when doing a poor man's covered call is that you're using a type of leverage. You see, you could have 100% loss in this position if realty income ended up below $40 per share at expiration because this call option you bought would have no value. In order if you lose 100% of your cash in a covered call position, then the stock would have to go to zero. The likelihood of that happening with a really stable company like realty income is pretty low. So just understand that when you're doing a poor man's covered call, you're using a type of leverage. And anytime you're using leverage, there's the opportunity to abuse that leverage and put yourself in a position where you might lose more money than if you had stuck with a traditional strategy like covered calls. So let's go through this scenario and see what the return would be using all the same trades, but doing it with a poor man's covered call strategy as compared to a covered call strategy. Now I've populated all those same trades we did in our covered call position in this poor man's covered call position, except for one very important thing that's missing if you're trading in dividend paying stocks. Remember that realty income is a monthly paying dividend stock, but since we own a call option, we don't actually own the shares of the stock, we're not receiving those dividends. You see, the owner of an option does not receive dividends like the owner of stock does. So notice that in this spreadsheet, in our poor man's cover cost scenario, I've now taken out all the dividends that we would have received if we had owned the stock and had done a traditional covered call. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to use this strategy in a dividend paying stock, especially if it has a pretty large dividend. But notice the cash flow. Since we're doing twice the number of contracts, six poor man's cover call contracts, versus the three for the covered call position. Notice our cash flow is a lot higher. It's $5,520 for the same time period for the same options that we rolled because we're doing six contracts. And that compares with the $3,900 that we received by doing the same type of trade using a covered call. And notice that our annual return was over twice as much as if we had traded this using a covered call strategy because it was 30% as compared to 14% for the covered call position. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're trading a poor man's covered call is that if the call option you sold is in the money expiration, you don't have the stock to be called away from you. So you'll need to buy that option back. And if you wanna keep the position going, sell a new option at a farther date. Whereas if you were in a covered call position, then you could just let the shares be called away from you. Anytime you can close out either one of these strategies by just buying to close the short near-term call options that you sold, in this scenario, the poor man's covered call, then you would just sell the long-term call option that you own. Or with a covered call, you could, of course, just buy the short-term call option that you sold and then sell your stock. Both of those would put you back at a cash-only position as compared to being in a poor man's covered call or covered call position. So let's review these two strategies side by side. Notice here that with the covered call position, our profit was $3,906. Whereas well, with the poor man's covered call position, we had a profit of $5,520. The capital that we needed with a covered call position was quite a bit more at $19,000 compared to the poor man's covered call, which we did twice the number of contracts, but we still only needed $14,430. And then notice that our return for our covered call position was 14% annualized, whereas the return for the poor man's covered call position was 30% annualized. So you see that with the poor man's covered call, we have a lower capital requirement. We have less money at risk, but we have twice the return. So what's the disadvantage of doing a poor man's covered call over a covered call? Well, a poor man's covered call requires a little more management because you don't have the stock to be caught away from you. If you simply keep an eye on how much time value is left in the option you sold, then you can prevent that assignment from happening. The other important factor you wanna make sure you understand if you do a poor man's covered call is that you're using a type of leverage. You wanna be careful anytime you use leverage because it's kind of one of those double-edged swords. It can be good when things go great, but when things go against you, it can really hurt you. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we buy stocks or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how to use poor man's covered calls and leaps options to decrease your risk while potentially increasing your returns, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled PMCC and Leaps Option Trading. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.